Hi world, it's about 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, Bermuda time, on Monday the 15th of March 2016. Um, I will be doing a week ahead video, but it's not going to be till tomorrow morning, I'm afraid. I've got a full day of readings tomorrow, so it'll be early in the morning. Big thank you to all those people in Bermuda, both in terms of clients and those people who are hosting me. You know who you are. So, um... I'm getting a pretty clear sky here at night, certainly Jupiter's resplendent, spectacular even. And I'm pretty, because I was up late last night, I'm pretty damn sure I've got a damn good view of Mars. Faint, but very orange. It got me thinking, Mars is in Sagittarius now. I've been dealing, I've been telling clients for months now that Mars is going to be coming into Sagittarius and standing still and going retrograde, zipping back into Scorpio for a couple of months, then moving forward and coming back again into Sagittarius. And it's not going to leave Sagittarius properly until the end of August, start of September. So for the next six months, we've basically got Mars in Sagittarius or at the end of Scorpio. Mars is a loud, feisty, fiery, provocative planet. It deals with being assertive and projective when it's in a good way and confrontational and aggressive when it's not. It's what you're like down the gym or digging the garden, in the bedroom, walking the dog. It's how you manage your physical energies at any given time. Sagittarius is not known for its subtlety, tact or diplomacy, but it is known for its transparency, straightforwardness and truthfulness. So Mars is actually rather comfortable in Sagittarius. It's a bit clumsy, it's a bit gung-ho and a little bit naive. But uh, it's got a basic philosophy here that says that if you always do things in a straightforward manner, you never have to worry about diversions. If you always tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said. And the shortest distance between two points is inevitably a straight line. Think of the arrow of Mars... And then think of the Sagittarian's arrow coming from the bow of the archer. And you'll see there is a quite a degree of similarity and commonality here. Mars likes being in Sagittarius. It's playful. It's bouncy and optimistic. It's cheerful a lot of the time. It's not diplomatic or subtle. It's not aesthetic and gentle, refined, elegant or sophisticated. In many ways, it's a bit of a cart horse clumpering in and just getting things done and not really being aware of whose shoes it treads on or, or, or what its effect on other people is. But it's done with generally a good sense of humour and a sense of enthusiasm that endears most people to it. Rarely do you find people with Mars in Sagittarius having complicated lifestyles. Um, the problem is, this time round, is that Mars is not going to be staying in Sagittarius that long. It moved in about a week ago. It's going to move forward to about 8 degrees. And then it's going to stand still and go backwards around mid-April. And leave Sagittarius around mid-May. And then it's going to go retrograde back into Scorpio, standing still uh, in, around the end of June. And when it stands still... It's going to stand still on the Neptune position of a number of people, a large number of people born around the generation. I think it's those people who are currently sort of 40 to 42 years old. They're all going to be getting hit by the Mars station in about three months' time, but I'll comment on that one nearer the time. At the moment, it is those people born in the first three or four days of Gemini and Sagittarius Virgo and Pisces who are all being affected by the um, upcoming Mars influence and if you're one of these then there is a need to be counting to 10 in the short term because the capacity for volatility, irritation, impatience and frustration is strong right now. You could easily say or do something that you'd later regret. This will pass, it will pass within a week or so but um, at the moment yes if you're born at the start of the mutable signs do be careful, do look across the road before you run across it. In the global level, Mars isn't hitting Saturn, although they're both in Sagittarius. Neither is it affecting Jupiter, nor for that matter Uranus, Neptune or Pluto, although it will come very close to squaring Neptune when it stands still. It's not really affecting the global dynamic. It is not really um, a, 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 
a global phenomenon. It is much more of an individual thing. But it is in Sagittarius, a sign of truth, justice, belief systems, travel, religion. And you can be sure that the religious card is going to be played more and more until mid-April, whether it's in the Middle East, whether it's in uh, the Catholic Church, whether it's in the American elections. And of course, America does have Sagittarius rising, so I imagine Mars in Sagittarius at this time is only going to boost up the oxygen that seems to be coming out of uh, some of the more unsavoury elements of the American election at the moment. Um, more on that later, because I've had a few replies to some of my Donald Trump videos, some of them very positive and one or two not so positive either. So I'll comment on that another time. But Mars in Sagittarius, have a look at the first seven or eight degrees of Sagittarius in your own horoscope. See what house it's in and be aware that there's going to be quite a lot of influence coming in that area over the coming four or five months and there's a need to take your time. There's no rush, not at the moment. I know Mars in Sagittarius wants action now, but believe me, you're best off waiting until July, August, when everything will be a hell of a lot clearer. Until then, bide your time. More on Mars in Sagittarius later. Catch you in the morning for the week ahead. Have a good night, world. Bye.